pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Take the roll, please. Trustee Lee? Yes. Trustee Heinz? Yes. Trustee Youngerman? Yay. Trustee Marisek? Yes. And Trustee Bond? Yes. At this time, we have public participation. Anybody uh, that's not on the agenda want to come talk? John, you want to talk about the Packers? No? Okay. Uh, next thing on the agenda is Fire Chief Tom Myers regarding the TIF rebate process. And like I told him, I didn't know he was on the agenda, so I put my red shirt on at 5 o'clock. And you can tell us about your pancake, how successful it was. Then you can go on to the rebate. Pancake breakfast was a huge success. Thanks for the board members that did show up for that. So, uh, and, and everybody else in the public. It was a great, huge success. A lot of participation. So we thank everyone for that. I know the TIF isn't on the agenda tonight, but if there's any discussion later in the meeting, I'd be happy to answer any questions and, and discuss it. So that's all I have. Thank you, sir. All right, the consent agenda. Members of the minutes of the Village Board meeting, May 22nd, 2017. Executive session minutes of May 22nd, 2017. The building report for April 2017. The accounts payable through June 8th of 2017 in the amount of $392,703.61. The cancellation of the June 20th, 2017 committee of the whole meeting and the carnival permit for a and &E attractions for Montgomery Fest. Take Motion the, to approve consent agenda. Second. Take the roll. Trustee Marisek? Yes. Trustee Bond? Yes. Trustee Lee? Yes. Trustee Heinz? Yay. And Trustee Youngerman? Yay. All right, the only other item for separate action is the ordinance 1771 granting a variance for Old Dominion at 2150 Ockett Road. This is the second reading. Uh, any discussion? I think our one member that had a question I've talked to since then, she said she has no question now on it, and she's in Atlanta, so uh, I'll take a motion to... Motion to approve the Ordinance 1771, granting variance to Old Dominion. Second. Take the roll. Trustee Marisek? Yes. Trustee Bond? Yes. Trustee Lee? Yes. Trustee Hines? Yay. And Trustee Youngerman? Yay. Items for discussion. Somebody got something besides you want to mention Wednesday night? Oh uh, no, I'll do I'll new and unfinished. Oh, okay. Items for discussion. Any? Okay, now we'll do it <laughs> now we'll do it under unfinished. Go ahead, Steve. Um, there will be a meeting um, Wednesday evening at seven o'clock here in Village Hall. Uh, it's a community wide meeting to discuss uh, some of the crime and nuisance issues that we've had in the village, particularly on the west side, but not isolated to the west side. Um, I've asked the police department to uh, come and, and do a presentation and also trustee bond uh, neighborhood watch. So it should be from, we're trying to keep it to two hours uh, from seven to nine and uh, hopefully we get, we get good things accomplished. And the meeting will be here in this room? The meeting will be here. It'll be set up like it uh, is a candidate form. Okay. I'm glad the uh, Neighborhood Watches, Inc. is at the last uh, mayor on the move. A lot of people were had their cars broken into, but none of them had them locked and even had keys in the car. And we're so going to talk about that, too. Neighborhood kids running around. So, All right. Future meetings. Hold on. Oh, wait, a couple other. All right. Go ahead. A couple other things. Mm -hmm. Let me go first, Steve, just because, okay. yes. Um, just a reminder, June 25th, we have the Sunday in the Park event on the west side of town uh, behind uh, Lakewood Creek School in the park there. It's a community-wide event just being hosted there uh, last year. It was a big success, and we're hoping for some more people, and I was promoting it at the concert in the park this past week, and several other people had been there. So just to promote that again, June 25th, concert in the, or Sunday in the park from 4 to 8. Next, um, it's come to my attention 
three or four weeks ago that uh, Matt Fitzpatrick was attacked by a dog. Um, and also um, that dog had a, attacked two people previous to that. And then also this past weekend, one of our police officers was attacked by a pit bull and had to undergo uh, eight stitches. Um, it w as I understand, the call was for a pit bull, uh, and I would hate to have seen what happened uh, had that um, pit bull attacked a child. My questions are, are these. The issues that we're having with the dogs, once a dog has attacked a person, as far as I'm concerned, there is no second chance the dog is euthanized. Um, and also, killing the dog is not punishment enough, I don't feel, for the family, because I, I feel that there, there aren't bad dogs, there are bad dog owners. And I would also like to see charges filed against those people for whatever we can charge them with if they can't control their animals. So I'd like to see that happen with Matt Fitzpatrick, and I'd also like to see that happen with this officer. Okay, the first one uh, were kids that the dog bit, and it's the same one that bit, bit Matt. But I can see uh, first time, like you say, get rid of the dog. I'm not saying it's get like rid these, of the dog, I'm saying know, kill the dog. Kill the dog, but at the same time, these are neighbors, and they didn't even show up for court, our policemen did. So it gets to the point that, do you want neighbors, you know, throwing stuff at each other and everything when and our, our police handled it? Uh, it's too bad Matt got bit, but I don't, we've always had the two bite rule here, basically, some of the other towns, North Aurora, Oswego, Red Aurora, Oswego, I think some dog bit somebody like four or five times and, and they still, question everything so um, I don't know I think two is fine because you might come over and my do, new dog might bite you as big as he is five pounds but then I don't want to put him down just because he bit you in other words twice is I think it's fine but go ahead talk to somebody I agree with that as well I was going to switch to another subject so I'll defer to anyone else that wants to discuss this one yeah, I, I was previously bitten by a neighbor's dog, St. Bernard, grabbed my arm, bit me. It was in its fence, and I asked the neighbor who was watching it, I said, is he friendly? He said, yes, and I reached my hand over the fence and the dog bit me. Whose fault is it? The dog didn't, you know, I, I went in his place. So I'm not sure I'd be real happy if I came home on vacation and found out that you put my dog down because I reached over the fence and he bit me. It's okay. not really the dog's fault. Sorry, if I could interject, I just wanted to respond to a few of the issues that were raised. Um, number one is we have um, updated our prosecutor with regard to the seriousness of these. So from the village's standpoint, um, you know, we're acting as the village. The individuals would also have a separate cause of action privately if they wanted to pursue the matter. So as far as the village goes, the village is aware of the situation and they will be prosecuted in local court. Um, as far as the actual ordinance goes, uh, there's certain state regulations that we have to follow with regard to what it takes to declare a dog dangerous or vicious. Um, but what we are doing is we're revisiting the ordinance to try to strengthen some of the language, um, you know, to make um, to make it stricter with regard to the village in accordance with the state law and those parameters and provisions, um, and also to implicate greater owner accountability in such cases as well, um, recognizing that, you know, dogs generally act up because the owner is being negligent in how they're caring for the animal. Um, so we will bring something back revised to the board to look at, and we're working with the police department to do so. Okay. Yeah, because it wasn't, it's not just bite, because like Doug said, he got bit, but uh, Matt had, what, 12, 20 stitches? What did Matt have? Yeah, so it's, that's not a real, just a bite. Dan? Yes, sir. Um, I agree um, that we we might have to tighten up our ordinance, and Attorney Julian's working on that in, uh, in her uh, office. Uh, Officer Coletta received eight stitches, so four in each puncture wound. Um, he goes back uh, for a review on Wednesday afternoon, so we'll see how it goes. But, uh, yeah, I, I am 
working with the village attorney and we'll get something together. Okay. Uh, one thing we found out today is that uh, animal control can't go on private property to remove a dog. So uh, that came from the supervisor of animal control out of Kane County. So we, I'll talk to attorney Julian about that situation. Okay. Thank you. You want my next item? Go ahead. Um, one of the things that, and this chief, this will be one of the questions I send you for Wednesday, and we talked about it briefly, but I'll, I'll let uh, our attorney know now. Um, in response to some of these juvenile issues that we've had, I'd like to look at the juvenile, juvenile ordinance fines and see if they're appropriate and see if we should increase those. And I start to pass some of the responsibility financially onto the parents. Dan, what's the curfew? The curfew is uh, midnight on Friday and Saturday and Sunday through Thursday, 11 p.m. Okay. And is that 17 or 18? Under 17. Under 17. Okay. I had a follow on comment in that regard as well. A friend of mine. Uh, installed a deer camera in their back window so they could see out across their patio and into the open area. And sure enough, three what appeared to be juveniles tripped that camera at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I, I believe that's been reported, but it, you just have to think a minute, why the heck are juveniles out at 2 o'clock in the morning? And they were literally on her back patio. The camera caught, caught that. So. There is some kind of education job that needs to be done in that regard. And they're probably 13, 14, you know. Good guess, yeah. yeah. Know where your kids sure. are at all times. <laughs> all right. Um, well, do you want my next item? <laughs> I was going to say, that's what I was going to ask. Is this going to be new, unfinished, or items for discussion? Go ahead. Have Pick we one. gotten anywhere with the access for the Hinchy property? No. Why is this so difficult? Could you turn on your mic, please? Yeah. Your, your mic, mic, please. Thank you. And that, so we've contacted the two landowners. One has given them access, but the other, the landowner's looking for access, doesn't want to use the one that's been granted. And the other option has said no. So. He does have a way in. Right. The property owners has granted him access. The when when I want to develop a piece of land, whose responsibility is it to make sure that there's access to another parcel? Do at some point does the village review this? No, because it was a private sale between. Between the, the so, two landowners. So what happens what parts. happens with so there's a private private sale of land. You're telling me after this private sale of land and after this land is developed, nowhere in that process it came it didn't come we before the review, village? We don't review the sale contract, no. But at, at we some review, point we review development plans we, for the We review the development plan and, and at, at at that point why wouldn't we identify there, if I could, uh, Trustee Youngerman, there was access, there still is access um, by way of right-of-way that has not been developed, that's uh, dedicated to the village. There's access to this property by way of crossing the railroad spurs. There's also been private access offered um, through another piece of property to this property that's in question. In both cases, the owner of the property that wants to be farmed uh, has indicated that he's not willing to put in the culvert and the stone that's required to cross the, the railroad uh, stubs. So there is access available with some improvements required by the property owner. And the railroad once washed stone and it looks so probably it, anywhere from 3,000 to 8,000. It's CA-7 instead of CA-6. It's no big deal. I don't know why this wasn't identified 
when this was looked through at development? Why would, why would we landlock an owner? I mean, he's got, he does have a public access. Yeah, and it's not landlocked. It's, it's directly abutting railroad spur that has to be crossed. Why wouldn't, and somewhere in this agreement, why wouldn't there be gravel put in across this that would have had to have been an agreement between the two property owners, the property owner that sold the property to the developer and himself. Okay, I think that's poor, but okay. I would probably think King County looked at it. Uh, so it, it, it got missed at various levels then. Well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be our, it would be to theirs, and, and they're the final on it. I think they have a person that checks into those things more, more than we don't even have anybody on our staff that's, that does that if for every piece of property sold. I would imagine they do. Um, and I, and I, would, I wouldn't mind if the TIF paid, if the TIF paid I'm, part of the And I'm okay gravel. with that, but here's the thing. You have a property owner who sells to a developer that's in our TIF district, which we are trying to develop because it, it benefits everybody. And then the property is developed, and then we say, no, we can't help you when now, now that it's been overlooked that you're landlocked. And I'm going to use landlocked because that's what he is. Because and we can't help you get into your property, even though it's going to cost $3,000. How do you, you keep hammering home landlocked? What Rich just said, there is access. He didn't, he's choosing not to improve his right of way to get into his land to cross those railroad spurs. I don't see how that's the taxpayer's, this is his private property. This is private property between two people. He should have thought this through, not staff. Yeah, I, you know, I agree. We're not, in, probably, we're not they, they involved. They probably should have thought it through a little bit okay, better. Wait so now it hasn't and been thought through. Let, let this lawyer isn't talk. something that would come before the village as, you know, being a transaction between two private property owners. So there's no obligation on the village, um, nor can they get involved in the private transaction unless they're coming to the village for something, at um, which time then the plan set would be reviewed. But a typical sale and transfer of land would not come before the village and would not be something that would come before the development department. Did Nexio come before the, the, the village for plan review? Yeah, their plans did, yes. Did United Sugars come before the village for plan review? Did, did we made United Sugars put in the, uh, the roadway, Commerce, correct? And they're going to be reimbursed? They're going to be reimbursed. Okay. Or, they put in and the, and the connection there at Nell Road, why wouldn't we make them put the gravel in to, I, it was it's it was poorly reviewed, it was missed. Why, I'm upset about it. Why would we put gravel in to a piece of land that the village has nothing to do with? There's no development. It's a, basically a vacant parcel. Why would someone say, well, in case someday, maybe somewhere down the line, somebody wants to do something back there, let's make them put gravel in? Because it's in our TIF district, and it's going to benefit the village of Montgomery at some point when it's developed. When it's developed, if it, if it, put that if it costs in, two or three thousand dollars to, to appease the land, okay. If I'm the land, out. if I'm the landowner, and I, I see, okay, Miss Montgomery, you don't want to help me do the two, three thousand dollars for the gravel. You know, I'll just sit on the land. But the gravel isn't to improve the land; it's to grant this guy access to farm it. If it was going to be developed, it would be a proper railroad crossing, and it would be done correctly and done through staff and community development would review that and do it. The, the proper way. This is somebody wants to put a dirt path in so that they can gain access right now, and then down the road when it develops, they'll do it properly. It may never develop because we pissed the, the homeowner off or the, the landowner. Well, maybe even like Lauren said, it doesn't come to the village, and I wouldn't be for even putting a $1,000 of the village money in there. The TIF money, entirely different. But this guy waited, remember, eight weeks now he's down to where he has to plant because he's a farmer. But it, it maybe bounced around too long, but if I would have been the person, I would have been panicking a long time before a week. I, I would say it was overlooked by everybody. 
that there's plenty of blame to go around. I have a more cheerful subject. Go ahead, Stan. <laughs> we are uh, embarking on our annual floral bed uh, recognition program, and that's designed to recognize homes and families that plant colorful flowers and arrange flower beds and blooming objects that make our community more beautiful. We're accepting uh, judging applications now. You can nominate yourself or you can nominate uh, another property in town that catches your eye. And we'll be, the beautification committee will be judging those entries on June 28th. So we are looking forward to another good successful program with that and we thank people for being part of the program. Can we do that through the website? Yes, they can go to okay. the village website. Thank you. And do the nomination. And uh, nominate their, either their own property or someone else's. Doug, don't nominate your own home. No, I have a neighbor, though, that I would hate to see overlooked. He does a, he's out there every day. So we'll make 40-some-odd people happy, most likely, on the 28th. All right. New business? No, I'm done. I'm Unfinished business? An item for discussion? Pete, you want to say something besides, uh, well, let me read the future meetings and I'll let you talk. <laughs> All right, future meetings. Beautification meeting is Wednesday, June 28th, floral bed display judging at 6 o'clock. Historic Preservation Committee, Monday, June 19th at 6.30. Committee of the whole meeting, Tuesday, June 20th at 7 o'clock is canceled, and then the intergovernmental meeting Monday, June 26th at 6, and the village board meeting following at 7, Monday, June 26th. Pete. So moved, make a move. June. Second. All in favor, roll call. Trustee Lee. Yes. Oh, excuse me. Trustee Heinz. Yay. Trustee Lee. Yes. Trustee Youngerman. Yay. Trustee Marasek? Yes. And Trustee Bond? Yes. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Yes, I would. Thank you. I thought Julie might like to. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm wearing that one. Sammy wants one, let me know.